So it's not really a big secret. We've had a lot of newer trucks coming in onto the property and you know, they're all bullnose at the end of the day. We got two that are gonna serve some purposes down the road, but we gotta tinker with one and see if we can get her going. Let's go over and drink it all in. Can we get this 6990i running that, you know, hasn't been running for, let's say, 20 years? Let's see what we can do. Welcome to IO Stable Garage. Now, this old sweetheart's a tired old unit, and it, it's showing its age. There's a couple of key issues that are going to stop us from driving this fella, so it's just going to be an engine revival on this one. But that's all we really bought this truck for. Let's take a nice walk around it and see what we're dealing with. The old Coke can, that's mine. Got to open that guy up and have a good old cold snack, but that's kind of what we're dealing with. It's a cabin chassis flavor, like the other three. But this guy has a couple things that are special about him, so let's talk about him. Let's uh, go back to front on it. So as you can see, used to be quite a long truck, actually. Looks like the rear bit got torched off. Frame rails are pretty good, other than where it's uh, that riveted on steel piece at the very edge. Right here, right there, they kind of fluff out a little bit, but it's not bad. This section right here to here back, it's actually really nice from what I can see. Looks to be like this guy's actually going to be running a Dana 60 on the rear end instead of a head and a quarter. Simply because of the housing, if you look, it has the plug right here. Normally the 10 and a quarter is 10 and a half, so they just have a stamp steel cover. comes right off, and the fill plug's off on the side. The old leaf packs are a little worse for wear, but look how many are in that pack. I'm counting four overload leaves and 13 leaves on the main pack absolutely wild this guy must drive like a buckboard this truck used to have a wood box on it much like that fella in the other dump over there so it, it's seen some work it's been overloaded we got good cross members on both sides we got really good parts from basically the cab back that we can use got a good drive line needs a couple u-joints all that stuff but again it's great for parks can't go wrong with any of that looks like we got a pretty functional saddle tank on this side i don't see any holes or anything except the old filler neck has been letting water inside it for i don't know 20 years whatever so that whole thing will need to be cleaned out but it's a good six nine tank that's not going anywhere for sure what we got for cab mounts oh the cab mounts are still there surprisingly looks like the old rocker panels are pretty much gone on both sides but we got a rear sliding window so it all evens out we also got a rear cargo light up here makes me think this isn't the original cab to this because uh cabin chassis don't come with that rear cargo light you would only have that if you had a bed so i don't think this is the original cab to this frame. another reason why i don't think it's the original cab when did you see a lariat cabin chassis in this year of truck i don't think that's a possibility come around to the front of this fella Fun fact, actually, about four years ago, I took the inner wheel wells out of this truck and put them in old blue over there. Ta-da. So part of this truck has already been used for Hyo Stable Garage, but it looks like we got a pretty nice paint scheme on this. The hood looks pretty good other than the little whiskey den over there, but it has a wonderful patina on it for what it is. Woodland Ford Mercury Grand Center. I believe that's gonna be Atlanta. I have to do a little bit of research on that fella right there. But yeah, that's kind of what it looks like from afar there. Would have been a cute little truck with a nice little box on her. And that's kind of what we got looking for the front. So it was running like an 83, I think it's 84 and up grill. The other ones don't have the Ford stamp on the middle. And the bumper is actually quite straight, but you know, she's pretty much rotten right through, as you can see. So that's going to be no good. That guy got tore off when, you know, we were taking it off the trailer. And right there is the whiskey den I was talking about. The hood itself looks pretty good, other than it has no paint on it. I might even be able to pull that out and put it on a nice beater truck or something like that. But we got good chrome pieces here and there. We'll be able to get a good amount of parts out of this fella to keep grandfather alive and also do a little bit of retrofit action there. Old blue. And that's the name of the game when it comes to these old trucks now, fellas. If you want to keep multiple of them alive, you got to have multiple to sacrifice. So you pick the rottenest, the worst ones in the whole crowd, and you go with it like that. But let's jump on inside there and see what's going on. Right before we jump on inside, it looks like we got a nice little whiskey dent right up here at the top. Not sure what took that guy out. 
But one thing that, you know, took me by surprise, look at the glass on this fella. Not a scratch, not a crack, nothing. And it's not original Ford window glass there, as you can see. She's an aftermarket unit, that's likely why. Got the basic, you know, bull nose separation on her. These window frames don't like to hold in very well. And this driver door is not in the best shape, but the old mirror actually isn't too bad for what it is. It's a good spare for old Blue. He runs those type of mirrors. Now, a few of you fellas might be asking, you know, why is this truck so hard to save compared to all the other ones? You've dealt with worse before, and that's true. But there's some big characteristics as we're going to be going through the truck that I'm going to show you guys that I'm aware of. Plus, she's got no paperwork for her, so she kind of is resorted to parts for there on in. New Brunswick's kind of a weird spot when it comes to truck cab paper. So either way, we're going to work our way through. But the first one I wanted to show you, check out the camber kit on the wheels. Kind of like this, eh? The steering box is completely seized up. I'll show you guys that in a little bit. But there's more stuff going down through. So actually moving the truck back and forth might not be a possibility. Now let's just see what we got going on inside this cab here. Hey, you know what? For a while, rotten the doors are. They shut pretty darn good. All right, so first kick at the cab. We got a few seized parts on this door here. The, the door paneling's kind of distraught, but we got a good aluminum door handle, good allure, aluminum whirly woo, and good windows. You can't go wrong there. As for the smell, doing things vice grip garage style, you know, we're kind of still in winter, as you can see the snow, so there's no ability for mildew or anything like that to ferment, so we're actually pretty good. Just kind of has that old truck warm, comforting old truck smell to it, you know? So I'm going to take you guys in and we'll take a nice long peek peek at this stuff. So first things first, good parts sitting right here. We got two seats. They might not be in the best of shape, but we got two bucket seats on the bucket seat rails. Because those are hard to find on these fellas. They just don't bolt in. That's a score right there. As you can see, it's kind of what we're dealing with. We got the top there. We got the old lightage. We can actually use him for parts. He seems to be all there other than bulbs. That's so here we got the Vintag there. She was made in Canada, so she's one of them Canadian bull noses. And she's a 1982 model. So as you can see, there's likely a, a little bit of hodgepodge going on because that grill doesn't belong to this truck, but that's okay. We'll just keep on going through. Got some nice aluminum door sills on it. That's a nice win right there. Here's one of the problems that we had, and you guys will see more when we open up that hood, but... Yeah, that's not supposed to do that. There's something going on in the column. Most likely it's because of that blown out, rusted, seized steering box over there. Is this a little piece of rubber in between these columns? And you can rip that guy right out. So she's done-o. Another one is, I already know this fella's done. It got no clutch in her. Got a nice little snake skin there. Whoop. Looks like we still got a turnstock on her. Got the original Ford wheel with the buttons. Got the old key eject like uh, like on our 96 F-150. We got an air filter gauge. I wonder if that fella is hooked up, not sure. Hey, it still works, you guys see that? That's pretty slick. We might actually keep that. Cargo light, that was likely wired into that guy, that back light around the cab right there. Looks like she's had her fair share of buttons and stuff put into her. As you see, no gauge cluster, no tack on this guy. But she's actually a five-digit odometer unit, so she only has 38,000 kilometers on her. She's in kilometers, by the way, but she's basically brand new. I think that guy's rolled over, you know, a couple thousand times, but that's all right. That's okay. Everything else seems all right. We got no keyage, so we're going to have to do everything from inside the engine bay, but that's no big deal. These 6.9 IDIs are quite easy to steal, not going to lie. Oh, yeah, we got a good win right here. Got basically the chrome package on her, chrome knobs, chrome, cigarette lighter, chrome everything. Awesome. Open up this fella there. Oh yeah, so uh, there's not a lot of floor left in this fella, not gonna lie. Basically needs floor pans, rockers, cab corners, the whole nine yards. But we got the cool vents there, still functional. 
good parts for other trucks, not gonna lie. So, I've been looking at this fella down here. I'm not sure what's going on with this tape. Looks like it's been welded there before. So, let me uh, take that tape off and we'll take another look. Now, just like I thought, we got a little bit of an interesting shifter going on down here. Originally, I thought this was a T19 four-speed, much like my blue super cab over there and not an MP435 like it's inside the 300i6 truck, grandfather's truck. But she's welded right down here. So I think, I think it's a T19 four speed shifter on an MP435 transmission. We'll be able to tell real quick just by looking underneath. So take a peek underneath. As you can see, we got a PTO port on our transmission on one side. And we got a PTO port on this side as well. So it's gonna be a T19 four speed in here. Now what we gotta do here is just see how things are gonna go. Oh. Shifting wise, we got first gear, second gear, third gear, fourth. It's hard to say if we're reverse because we don't have that clutch pedal, but it seems to have all of its gears. And that's what we want. So we're going to leave her in neutral for now because, you know, neutral is the best spot for this transmission to hang out in. We're going to pull the hood latch, which is, uh, you know, right here hanging on the ground. Ugh, there we go. Open up that hood. And then we can get inside the power barn and just see what that mill is going to produce. Oh, yeah, by the way, I don't really know much on this chain drive transfer case here but it was kind of part of the deal because we need four-wheel drive in our international in the barn it's a bog warner or something whatever who knows but it's mechanically shifted exactly what we want so let's take a peek inside that power mill another thing before we just jump into that engine i thought that this uh you know dash pad was all destroyed but it's really just over here and no cracks or anything inside this guy so Come to dash pad wise, she's actually in pretty darn good shape. So let's open up this mill and see just what's going on inside. So, you know, first things first, we got no radiator in her. Somebody stole the radiator out of her a long time ago, but that's okay. We're not really after electrical, nothing like that. As long as our mill works, transmission, we're happy pretty much. But you know what? Rad support's actually in pretty good shape, other than a little bit of whiskey dent there, a little bit of rot, that kind of stuff. But the Rad support's actually in really good shape for this year. So we got good parts right on this. When we take this off, we'll pull her out. Something neat about these early IDIs, if you take a peek, this fella right here is in a different spot than on all the other trucks. Usually it's just kind of hanging out over here. She's hanging out there instead. So one thing I thought was a little unnerving, you know, Never really noticed it before, but we got the dipstick. You know, she was just kind of hanging out right there. Means nothing as of right now, but that means that this dipstick has been exposed for who knows how long. At least the hood was on it. But who knows what the condition of this oil is. Before we run it, we might have to check it. But side note, we got one of the cool little light daubers right here. That's a neat unit right there. So you know what the best idea is, is to take this stick here and... We'll ram her in right now and just see what we got for oil down there. Do we got pay dirt? What's All right, on? so we just jammed her in there. Let's pull her back out and see what we got. Oh, yeah, we got pay dirt in there. A little grimy. She's a little thick. A little thick. Not really dripping off. Oh, just hold on. She might be okay. Oh, yeah, she's fine. All right, good enough for it to run there. On, We're not going to change the oil on her just yet. And we're likely going to break her apart when she's out of this truck. Anywho, but we'll kind of we'll kind of put that guy back where he belongs there. Not a big deal breaker for me. So I guess the best thing to do is to ram jam this air cleaner off and see just what's going on inside. Okay, so she comes off nice and easy. So let's just pull her right off. So first things first, looking like it's pretty clean on the inside there. And then a little bit of oil. Looks like she might have a little bit of blow by in this fella. But that's okay, we'll figure it out. As for the injection pump, doesn't look seized. That's what you want. So it must be the pedal itself that's seized on this fella. Not a huge deal. She actually was for an automatic. As you can see, this is not the original injection pump or maybe it's not even the original engine. It's hard to say. But she has the automatic shifter on this. This does your vacuum control 
back and forth because there's no vacuum control on these 6.9 IDIs other than that fella right there. So this is what I wanted to show you about that steering box down there. As you can see, this shouldn't be moving independently. So inside the box underneath this collar there, she's all, you know, destroyed and not too happy. And then over here, that guy's not supposed to be bent like that. So the whole steering situation on this fella is all out of the water. But we're not after the steering, we're after the engine. So first things first, let's uh, put a socket on this guy and see if we can make a full rotation. All right, so what we're interested in right here is this to see, you know, is the old engine, is the power plant all locked up? Now let's see uh, what kind of rotation we can get out of this old bird. Oh, I can feel the compression already, so it's uh, pretty good. So she's all freed up. It's spinning over fine, which is a really good win for us early on. So now what we're going to do, we're going to pull off this fuel filter and just kind of see how she's doing in there. It's likely not doing so hot. All right, so I imagine this filter is going to be on Hulk Hogan style, but we're just going to try to manhandle her off first. Okay, so it came off... Uh, really easy really easy we got you know it looks like they're diesel in there got a little bit of rust and stuff but this filter is going to be okay i think just to get this fella running i don't see any issues with that as you can see there's a little tiny bit of rust in there not too bad and it's uh, not free so it should be okay we're gonna fill them up really good but before that we're gonna actually disconnect that fuel system but I think we might get lucky if the fuel lines are still okay, we can just disconnect it at the tank. Because you got to remember, this whole tank here has been open to the elements for quite a while. So if we can just do the old hop chop right there and there, put a jerry can down, I think we're going to be right as rain. No problems whatsoever. So what we got here is a pretty basic system. We got here a jug of diesel, a bunch of old water line filled with... I think water. What we're gonna do is simply unhook these two lines here. Hope that they, you know, don't have any leaks in them. Plumb this fella in together. And then from there, we're gonna go back up front. So that's what we're gonna do. Let's hook up these two lines here. Up in my now, if I've learned anything on these old IDIs from all the trucks I've owned and worked on, it's that fuel is key. Fuel pressure, fuel quality, is important so what we're gonna do and you know having fuel and not lack thereof is also a big contender for these trucks so what we're gonna do is we're immediately gonna pull the top of this injection pump off because it doesn't have the old safety torques on her the old anti-tamper torques this is just normal flathead so we're gonna pull those flathead fellas off take that off see what kind of fuel is happening inside this injection pump and if it needs to be topped up we're gonna top her up See what we got cooking inside this kettle. And when I mean dry, I mean dry, dry. But you know what? It looks awful clean in there, which is good. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna fill that guy clean filled with ATF. Extra on three, you know, just cause we had it around. It's gonna help clean out all these injector lines at the very beginning before the new diesel even hits her. Plus, because it's been dry for so long, just spinning it is gonna spin those weights on the inside and score that liner up all the way. So the ATF's gonna help out. It's not gonna run on it, but it will lubricate the entire thing. Now what's that old saying? Try to make as much mess as possible. Oh no, that can't be it. <laughs> Here we go, we'll fill that sucker right up. Right up to the tippy top. Make a little bit of mess, that's okay. And then, we'll slide that guy back together. Just like so. Like it's never been apart, but the old uh, ETF is going to really help out when it starts spinning, whirling around. All right, so we got the pump all back together. What we're going to do, we're going to pull these guys off because we don't want the pump to engage. That's not our goal here. One would say in order to do this right, pull the each injector, squirt a whole bunch of transmission fluid in it, roll it over, coat the entire cylinders, and then start going with it like that. We're not going to do that just because I know if we touch these guys, they're going to break and we don't have spares. So 
we're not going to deal with that at all. It's just going to have to pull through. But we will squirt some WD-40 right down its intake. Whoa, we're turning it over just to help her out a little bit. But first things first, we're going to go get a big hot battery, put her in. One Optima should do her, I think. If not, we'll go pull another battery. And we're just going to watch the fuel that comes out of here. So we got ourselves a nice freshy Optima Red Top battery. Should work out pretty darn nice. We're going to sit them kind of right there on that frame rail down there. So we got a live power going to this fella now. <laughs> kind of drink it all in. See if we can smell anything going on. I don't yet. But as you can see... There's no uh, solenoids or anything left of her. So it's going to have to be all direct right onto it. So that means jumper cables, all that stuff. But that's okay. We can get her going that way. So let's just take this sucker out of gear there. Let's get some jumper cables and see if we can give this guy a whirl. All right. So we got a really insanely rudimentary starting system set up here. We got our ground. We got our positive. And that's basically just going to our starter for the time being. We just want to see if this guy will rotate and do the thing, basically. Nothing more crazy than that. So I'm really going to Zeus these guys down here. And then this guy right here, I did some tracing. This one is our main positive, our main feed going to our starter. This right here is our activator. He's kind of a heavy gauge, so it makes me think he's been, someone's been in there before. But you just kind of rat-a-tat-tat these guys together. And it should go. So let me put these guys on a little bit better. And then we're going to see if it whirls over. I'm going to hammer that guy back down there a little bit on my negative. Hammer my positive on. Perfect. My booster cable positive. Now we should just be able to touch this guy to this guy. Just kind of see what happens. Well, it did something. Come on now. So it seems like the starter motor isn't turning, but the actual solenoid itself seems to be okay on it. Seems to be the same situation. I think the starter motor itself must be seized up, not the cable, because we bypassed the cable right then and there. All right, so it's come to fruition that I think that starter has to come out. I don't think she's any good. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull that starter out and then we're gonna take her apart and just see what's going on. So there's the starter right there. Gonna zing out those three bolts, take off the power lines, and then so we, we got the old it. starter out. She's a little on the crunchy side, but the Bendex and stuff isn't seized. So, not sure what's going on. The motor itself could be seized, but the rest of it isn't. So we're gonna have to just see about that. We'll tear this guy apart and we'll see what's on. Cables didn't look too hot either, so it could be one or the other. But either way, wouldn't be a bad idea to go through this guy and freshen him up. So that's what we're gonna do. But first off, this truck, it's not fun working in the mud. And like, this is what I mean there. We got a, she's mud-tastic right now. Me working on my belly and everything, it's not very enjoyable. So what we might do is hook a chain onto this guy, strap and all that stuff and drag him over there and get him running. Cause once we get this guy running, we're just gonna start pulling him apart anyway. So it'll work out great. Might as well do a cold start on the old IDI. She likes to run too, so we don't discriminate around here. There we go. Turn that guy off, turn that guy on. Enjoying the nice, oh geez. There we go. We're enjoying the nice warm weather. Snow's finally melting, thankfully. Give it a couple seconds. Shouldn't need anything and hoorah. There we go, awesome.
we got the truck on the concrete slab. I'd be lying if I said Old Blue did the entire job. We had to get the loaders for that last little intricate part. But now we got her pretty much in her final resting place. Well, you'll see it as a truck. We're going to get her running here. It's going to be easier on me because, you know, concrete. concrete is better than, you know, a foot of mud. But second off, we can completely strip this front clip and pull the whole engine transmission out as one piece. And then this guy can go to the place where trucks go in the sky after that. Either way, we got a starter to rebuild. We're going to rebuild that and then we're going to get this guy running. All right, so we're back on the 350. I got the rebuilt starter right here. What we're going to do, we're going to slap it back inside the truck. So we'll try to get her running. Here's the deal. I'm a little lazy. We got the starter going in. It's just clicking right now. We did get it to rotate a couple times, but the problem I'm occurring in is all the cables are absolutely hot garbage. There's only about a quarter of the strands left in all the cables. I'll show you guys in a quick second. My booster cables are too thin for the length that they are. They'll rotate the engine fine, but there's way too much amps being lost over those cables, and it's no good. I got fenders in the way and all that stuff. And you know, we're gonna be pulling the engine at the end of this anyway. There's no rad, there's nothing like that that's really stopping me. So I think what we're gonna do, we're gonna rip this entire front clip off and see about getting the engine running just like that. If not, we're gonna get the whole assembly out on here on the concrete and we'll get it running right here on the ground. Now, isn't that a good wall hanger if I ever seen one? If I can get that bumper off, she's going up on the wall, at least until we work on grandfather's truck, because this is actually a really, really good rad support. Nice big opening, because it was a 6.9, just has a little bit of normal rot there and there, but the actual holes, completely fine. So that's a great, great wall hanging piece. Awesome. Now what we gotta do, we gotta unbolt the transmission cross member on both sides. Might even have to just cut him off and then unbolt the drive shaft, unbolt our mortar mount, so then we should be able to lift in, lift the whole thing, scoot it out. Oh, sorry, and take off the shifter housing on the top. Not a big deal. So that's what we're gonna start working on. First, I'm gonna see if I can get inside on those motor mounts there and rip those guys So off. that was fun. A lot of cutting underneath. I saved you guys the trouble of seeing that because there's no good camera angles underneath. You only got a foot of space. So we cut the exhaust, we cut the transmission cross member, we took the shift tower out, whole bunch of stuff. We undid the motor mounts. Kind of come in here. As you can see, got the top plate, all that stuff off. It's a T19 confirmed, so is what it is. It's a good transmission, just has a very low first gear, but it's a very, very strong transmission, so. There we go, looks like it's low. So there we go, we got the power plant outside now. So now we can kind of let her down onto the ground and see if we can get her running now, now that it's out of the truck. Right, so this is my setup right here. We got the starter inside. I got this hooked on parallel. We got our main ground there. And then I got my signal right here. So when I touch my signal to that, it should whirl over. So keep in mind, our starter is rebuilt, but no parts were changed. It's just gone through and cleaned from a complete seized unit. So, you know, don't expect the best, but we'll deal with what we got. All right, so first test, here we go. She's, uh, <laughs> she's a little tight. So, time to try out our system. Here we go. Oh, gotta ground it out. Good. All right, so our system works, our ground works, all that stuff. So, what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna hook it up to some diesel and see if it starts coming out of the fuel filter. 
All right, so what you guys are gonna watch is see if you get diesel coming out of here, because we have the filter off, all that stuff. I'm gonna crank it over, and we're basically gonna wait for diesel to come up from the pump. I got it right now on a jerry can, so let's see how we do. <laughs> on that one but we did get fuel coming out of that filter head so we got the fuel filter this is just the old fuel filter it really doesn't matter we got him filled up with just atf actually i'm gonna plumb him on and now when this runs initially we already have the injection pump plumbed full of atf we got the fuel filter plumbed full of atf so the idea is it will run on just pure atf for the little bit It'll have a lot more lubricity in just the ATF than the diesel ATF mix that we're running through. So, what we're gonna do, we're gonna start spraying some good good down its throat, you know, some ether, some good ether. Let's see how we do. All right, so next thing we gotta do since we bypass a lot of things, we gotta basically make sure that our solenoid inside our injection pump is working correctly. So I got these both hot power. You gotta put one here. You hear the solenoid click? Engage him. Then this one, you should also hear another solenoid click. Awesome. That's what we need to do. So we're going to hook up both. Hot power. That should open up our injector circuit. Now, we've already sprayed a little bit of WD-40 down the intake. But WD-40 is never going to do it with just one battery. So what we got to do, we got to use a little bit of ether. Ether is going to work out just great. Try not to blow myself up. Contact. <laughs> try her once more let's see if we can get her going i got faith contact oh needs better ground than that hold on contact <laughs> So we're doing okay. Give it a couple seconds, kind of breathe out. She's been sitting for a long time, but she'll go. I got faith. Put this little fella in just a bit on this throttle. Might help him out just a little bit. We'll do the old zip ties and bias ply special. Leave her about half cheech, you know? It's a little terrifying with that fan on, but I think we're going to do okay. All right, let's try her out again. all right so our batteries are pretty drained out because it's drawing a lot of amps but what we're gonna do we're gonna leave these guys charging overnight and then we're gonna try her out again either way some neat stuff the old return lines return and the old fuel pumps a pump now if you're gonna do this the right way you would bleed the injectors relieve a lot of pressure let the fuel come up but i know if we touch those caps and those o-rings in the way that they are we're gonna break them and we don't have replacements so we're not gonna bleed them we're just gonna use ether should work <laughs> I'm 
Bulls did it. Oh, oh man, how are you going to put it out, bro? I <laughs> just started <laughs> kicking the cables off the batteries. <laughs> just it's literally just me trying to muscle through it it's not the right way to do things it'll eventually work though but it is the right way it's the way we're gonna go about it that's right All right, so I had no choice. We got to crack the injector lines. I didn't want to do them because it's going to destroy the return lines, but I was thinking we're changing them out anyway. Who cares? It just has to run, you know? So that's what we did. We took these guys off. It's going to leak like a sieve, but it should run. Or at least at the very beginning, it should bleed. That's what we're going to try to do. I'm going to whirl it over. We're going to go until each one is wet with fuel, and then... We'll tighten them up and we'll try again. <laughs> All right, so each one actually bled out. We're gonna tighten them all up, and then we're gonna try again. <laughs> So, prognosis, engine, all that stuff seems to run okay, especially when it has fuel, all that stuff. The injector lines are completely shot. They're already all leaking out, and my oil filter blew out the side, likely due to rust. Off she went. 
As for my return, it's actually doing the thing. It's doing exactly what it needs to, and that ATF diesel mix is going through. Awesome. So everything actually was working out pretty much as it should. I'm going to clean up because that's pretty much it for this fella. She runs. We know it's good. Now we just got to, you know, fix all the 6.9 issues. There you go, guys. That pretty much completes the revival of the old 6.9. I know it's not in the truck, but we didn't need the truck. We just wanted the engine and the power plant and all that stuff. And it's a guaranteed runner. It actually did the thing and moved. Might need some fine tuning here and there, but it's working out pretty good so far. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. A little bit of a long one. But I'll catch you guys in the next one really, really soon on something. There's always something to do.